Tyler and Margot wait on a duck. The two are about to attend a fine dining meal by a renowned chef. Margot lights a cigarette, but Tyler warns her not to smoke as it will kill her palate and ruin her appreciation of the meal. Eventually, Margot gives in and puts the cigarette out. More people arrive at the dock. Three business partners making loud banter, an actor named George Diaz and his assistant Felicity, a famous food critic named Lillian along with her editor Ted, and a couple named Richard and Anne. As they get ready to board the boat that will take them to the restaurant, Tyler tells Margot he paid $1,250 a head for this meal. He reassures her that the magical experience will be worth the hefty price tag. The boat sails to a small private island, where the restaurant Hawthorne is. The guests are welcomed by one of Hawthorne's staff, Elsa. As they check in, Elsa calls Margot a different name, apparently, Tyler had initially invited someone else. She looks suspicious of the sudden change. Tyler apologizes to Margot for the mix-up. Elsa gives the guests a tour of the island. They go to the smokehouse, where proteins are aged and smoked. Then they see the staff's quarters, where everyone but the chef lives. Elsa explains that they run things like a family there. Starting at 6 in the morning, they do prep work, harvest, ferment, slaughter, marinate, and more. The dinner course typically lasts over 4 hours, ending at past 2 in the morning, which is why living on the island is efficient for the staff. As they walk to the restaurant, Tyler points to a cottage and asks Elsa who lives there. Elsa says that is where the chef lives and that even the staff are not allowed inside his cottage. They arrive at the restaurant, which is large and has a modern design. Several cooks are seen meticulously preparing in the kitchen. Elsa shows Margot to her table, as the staff do the same for the other guests. Margot sees her seat was originally reserved for Ms. Westervelt. Before dinner starts, Elsa tells everyone that they are free to observe the cooks, but are prohibited from taking photos per the chef's orders. Tyler eagerly walks up to the kitchen and asks questions about what the cooks are preparing. Tyler is familiar with their methods, and a cook gives him credit for knowing his stuff. As they sit back down, Tyler spots the head chef entering the kitchen. He watches in awe as the chef oversees dinner preparations. Elsa approaches the chef to tell him something, and he looks over at Tyler and Margot's table. Tyler notices this, and tells Margot the chef is looking at him. Margot turns around, and sees the chef's glare. Dinner starts with an amuse-bouche, cucumber melon with milk snow and charred lace. As they eat, Elsa walks around, observing all the guests. Lillian talks about her impression of its presentation and taste. Tyler quickly snaps a photo. George and Felicity argue at their table. The business partners make a toast to their careers. Tyler fawns over the amuse-bouche. He explains to Margot why he's such a fan of the chef. He doesn't understand people who idolize athletes, musicians, and artists because their work doesn't matter. Chefs, on the other hand, use the raw materials of life for their craft. The chef makes a loud clap to get everyone's attention and introduces himself, Chef Julian Slowick. He welcomes the guests and gives his opening remarks. Over the next few hours, the guests will be ingesting fat, salt, sugar, protein, bacteria, various plants and animals, and even entire ecosystems. The only thing he begs them to do is not to just eat, but to taste, savor, and relish the food. The cooks serve the first course called the island. Chef Slowick explains the dish and how it was made. Tyler whispers excitedly to Margot what he knows about the dish, but the chef notices this and calls him out. Tyler apologizes, and Chef Slowick continues to explain that everything on the plate comes from the island. The speech makes Tyler tear up, and he takes photos of the food once again, before they start eating. Lillian and Ted discuss their thoughts on the dish. George and his assistant discuss, and argue about how he would pitch a food show to a streaming service. The businessmen eat, but don't really savor the food, and say they're paying more for the experience. Chef Slowick claps once again, and introduces the second course, the breadless bread plate. It is a plate of tiny accompaniments and spreads, without any bread. There are mixed reactions from the guests about this. Tyler, of course, is impressed and tries to explain the concept to Margot. She, on the other hand, thinks it's nonsense. The business partners ask Elsa for bread. When she refuses, one of them tries to get their way by implying they are important people. Still, Elsa denies their request. Back at Tyler and Margot's table, Tyler is trying to convince his date to give the breadless bread plate a try. She says no, so Tyler reaches for her plate to take it for himself but accidentally knocks over and breaks a wine glass. Chef Slowick approaches their table and notes how Margot hasn't touched her food. Margot replies that there is no food. The two argue about the meal while Tyler watches, humiliated. The third course is called Memory. The chef introduces his mother who is seated alone at a table and tells a story from his childhood when he stabbed his father in the thigh for strangling his mother. The guests are then served house smoked chicken thigh with tortillas, a Hawthorne signature dish since day one. To add a new twist to the dish, they use laser engraving to put images on the tortillas, custom for each guest. However, the images on the tortillas turn out to be humiliating images that expose their secrets, causing tension at every table. After an argument with Tyler, Margot gets up from the table and starts to walk out. Elsa stops her. Margot explains she's just looking for the ladies' room. In the ladies' room, Margot lights a cigarette when suddenly, the chef walks in. He asks her why she has barely eaten, as he takes his work very seriously. The chef continues to interrogate her, asking who she is and where she's from. He tells Margot that she should not be there tonight, 
Margot exits the ladies' room and returns to her table. At the start of the fourth course Chef Slowick introduces his sous chef Jeremy who created the next dish called The Nest. As Jeremy stands beside the chef straight-faced, Chef Slowick explains how Jeremy came to work at the restaurant. The chef says although he is good, Jeremy will never be as great as him. He asks Jeremy if he is happy with his life. With tears in his eyes, Jeremy says no, and then takes away his life in front of everyone. The guests are stunned with what they just witnessed and start questioning the chef, but he just says it's part of the experience. They are served the next dish called the mess, vegetables, roasted filet, and bone marrow. Margot stares in shock, but Tyler ignores her and enjoys his meal. Richard and Anne try to leave, but Elsa and other staff members stop them. Restaurant guards get a hold of Richard and chop off his left ring finger. The guests watch in shock, but Tyler continues to eat, and Lillian and Ted think it's all an act. Chef Slowick summons Margot to the kitchen. Tyler tries to join them, but is denied. The chef says that when he planned this entire dinner, she was not part of the plan. Margot is ruining everything for him. She asks if the chef will let her leave, but he says they will all die tonight. It's a question of if she will die with those who give or those who take. He gives her 15 minutes to decide. Tensions are high in the restaurant. One of the businessmen uses his chair to try to break a window, but to no avail. As tea is served, Chef Slowick allows the guests to ask question. They ask him what's going on, and he replies that they are like ingredients in a tasting menu. He says they shouldn't be surprised by this, and starts calling out each guest for their wrongs against him. Lillian damages livelihoods with her food reviews. Richard and Anne have been to Hawthorne 11 times, but cannot name a single dish they've tried there and the businessmen work for an investor who questioned the chef's work. Margot's 15 minutes are up, and she speaks with Chef Slowick in his office. She tries to sweet-talk him, but he isn't buying it. He can tell she's also a service industry worker. He prods Margot to reveal her connection to Richard. She is an escort, whom Richard once hired to act as his daughter as he masturbated. Chef Slowick asks if she enjoys providing service. She says she used to. He says the same about his career. He hasn't desired to cook for someone in ages. They return to the dining room, and the doors are open. The chef invites them all to step outside. He introduces another sous chef, Catherine. She tells the guests that Chef Slowick had tried to sleep with her repeatedly, but when she kept refusing, he stopped speaking to her at work. She takes a small pair of scissors and stabs Chef Slowick in the thigh, then they hug. Chef Slowick then offers the male guests a chance to escape, giving them a 45-second head start to run before the staff members try to catch them. Meanwhile, the women return inside with Catherine to taste another course, and confronts Margot about Richard. Felicity gets confirmation from Catherine that they will all die tonight. Catherine says that everyone dying was actually her idea, something that would tie everything together thematically. As they continue to whine and dine, Margot admits her real name is Aaron. Then the staff return with the men, who failed to escape, and have been beaten up. Chef Slowick says the menu cannot continue until they deal with an unresolved matter, Tyler. In his correspondence with the chef, Tyler was told this dinner would be the greatest menu ever created. With some prodding, Tyler admits he was told in advance that everyone would die. Tyler's original date apparently broke up with him, and since there were no tables for one, he hired Margot to be his escort, knowing she would die. Learning this, Margot charges at him and punches him in the face. In Tyler's mind, Chef Slowick invited him because he was impressed by Tyler's knowledge of food. The chef leads him to the kitchen, where he's handed a chef's jacket and forced to cook. All the guests and staff are made to watch as Tyler nervously prepares a lamb dish. Chef Slowick tastes Tyler's finished dish and insults it. The lamb is undercooked, and the sauce is barely edible. Chef whispers something to Tyler. Then Tyler takes his jacket off and walks off in tears. Chef Slowick calls Margot into the kitchen and makes her fetch a barrel in the smokehouse. Elsa hands Margot the key to the smokehouse. As she makes her way out, she sees Tyler has hung himself in another room. The rest of the guests sit in the dining room. George tries to bargain with Chef Slowick, but the chef interrupts him to reveal the reason George is there. He watched George's movie Call Me Dr. Sunshine. He says it's pitiful when an artist loses his purpose. In the smokehouse, Margot steals a knife. Then she goes into the chef's cottage, which looks like an exact replica of the restaurant. She tries to unlock the silver door when she hears Elsa's voice behind her. Elsa takes the knife and tells Margot she's been a nuisance who will not replace her. Before Margot can respond, Elsa attacks her with the knife. The two fight in the kitchen and Margot manages to stab Elsa in the throat. She takes the key from Elsa and unlocks the silver door. Inside the room are framed photos and articles about Chef Slowick. Margot spots an old photo of the chef, much younger than now, happily flipping burgers. Then she sees a radio and calls for a coast guard. Back at the restaurant, Chef Slowick brings out a birthday cake for one of the businessmen. His partners thought it would be funny, three hours ago, before the chaos started. Margot enters with the barrel and takes her seat. Then they hear a boat arrive, and the chef realizes Margot found the radio. He warns them not to ask for help. The coast guard enters and reports that he heard about a violent disturbance, but the chef and staff all deny it. George pretends to sign an autograph for the Coast Guard that actually reads Help Us. It seems like the Coast Guard is about to save their lives, but it turns out he works on the chef's side after all. Chef Slowick accuses Margot of breaking their trust and calls her a taker just like everyone else. The final course is about to be served when Margot gets an idea. 
She claps loudly, as the chef did earlier, and announces that she doesn't like his food and would like to send it back. She tells him his food tastes like it was made with obsession, not love, and that he has failed at his job of serving people good food. Now she's bored and hungry. Chef Slowick asks what she's hungry for, and she requests a cheeseburger, a real one, not something fancy. He agrees to this, and starts preparing the burger. A small smile crosses the chef's face as he lays the meat and cheese on the griddle. His smile grows as he puts the finishing touches on the burger, then serves it to Margot with a side of fries. He awaits her reaction as Margot bites into the burger. They smile at each other and agree that this is a real cheeseburger. She asks for the rest to go. He hands Margot the cheeseburger in a takeout box. He thanks her for dining at Hawthorne and lets her go. As she exits, she takes one last look at all the other guests, who are just sitting silently and watching this exchange. She says nothing to them and walks out of the restaurant. Chef Slowick, teary-eyed, watches her leave, then tells the guests it's time to settle the bill before dessert. He seems distracted, no longer in control like before. He thanks them for dining at Hawthorne, and says they represent the ruin of his art and of his life, and now they get to be part of it. The cooks place a coat of marshmallows, and a cap of chocolate on each guest. Chef Slowick explains the final course, a twist on the classic s'more. The guests realize what is happening. The chef, with his staff standing behind him, suggests they embrace the flame. Then he stands in the center and sets the restaurant on fire. Margot makes her escape on the Coast Guard's boat. She watches the restaurant go up into flames behind her as she eats her cheeseburger in peace.